the topic which we are going to discuss today is very important and burning one most litigated issues under input tax credit if you look at the gst law which got introduced on july 1 2017 as per 101 constitution amendment act it was promised there would be seamless flow of credit and object was no cascading of taxes but if you look at gst as on date you will find most issues which is coming up and cropping up under gst input tax credit i will keep my presentation in extempore mode will pick up the issues four or five important issues which are most litigated request my participants to join in and they can always say yes and no in a chat box so that i get a feeler of it that what is your take on that subject matter so without taking much time let me start with the first prominent and most debated issue gstn which is gst network has issued advisory on availing credit and they have said that credit to be availed which you must reconcile with your gstr 2a or 2b so i'm starting with the first question then i will give my explanation to all of you please tell me whether my credit as a buyer as a recipient is dependent upon gstr 2a or 2b is it really dependent if you believe answer is yes you can write down in a chat box yes if you think no my credit is not dependent on gstr 2a or 2b you may write down in a chat box no so that i get a clarity yes this is what the vibration of all the members which is coming out if we look at this particular thing uh, which is happening in the market and gst and the kind of answer we are getting from different corners my answer my answer before i can before i give my explanation to all of you i'm finding a lot of you are saying that uh, my credit is dependent upon gstr 2a or 2b my answer to all of you is my credit is not dependent i'm repeating again not dependent on gstr 2a or 2b now look at my answer why i'm saying it is not dependent i'm giving you my explanation to all of you and then after concluding i will check from you whether you all are with me or not see today let's say i'm a supplier in delhi and you all are my buyer recipient in mumbai maharashtra i have supplied the goods from delhi to maharashtra being supplier i need to furnish my outward supply in gstr1 so as it is coming in your 2a which is dynamic statement or 2b which is statistic statement for availing input tax credit let's assume i have made mistake supplier has made mistake putting your gst number instead of putting your gst number i have furnished gst number of other party and time period for amendment of gstr1 is gone i could not amend the same so what happened wrongly furnished by supplier gst number whether it is going to be reflected in your 2a or 2b it is not let's say it was b2b supply from registered supplier to registered recipient i have wrongly furnished under b2c and time period for amendment is also gone it will not come in your 2a or 2b third example when i have supplied from delhi to maharashtra place of supply should be maharashtra if wrongly i have furnished as a delhi then it will not going to be reflected in your 2a or 2b let's take another example that it was interstate supply from delhi to maharashtra igst charged tax invoice is showing igst but wrongly furnished by supplier as intrastate and shown as a c and as cgst and sgst whereas he should have shown as igst transaction 
it is not going to be reflected in your GSTR 2A or 2B. And I posted a query to all of you, whether credit is dependent on GSTR 2A or 2B. I could see some of the answer in the beginning I got. You said my credit, bias credit is dependent on GSTR 2A or 2B. Now, please tell me, please tell me, mistake of supplier, he could not amend the same. It is not coming in your 2A or 2B. Credit is not available. I given my judgment that credit is available and it is not dependent upon 2A or 2B. My legal argument number one, legal argument number one. And listen very carefully. Once I conclude, I will check from each one of you and request each one of you to reply also in a chat box. What are the conditions for availing credit under GST? Section 16, subsection 2 of CGST Act. There are four conditions to be satisfied for availing credit. What are those four conditions? As a buyer, you should have tax invoice, which you are having. You have got the invoice with you. Second, you must have received goods or services. When I supplied from Delhi to Maharashtra, you got the goods as well. Third, your supplier must have paid taxes. Section 16, subsection 2, clause C. It is most debated. I will take up this issue after this issue, which we are discussing. Your supplier must have paid taxes. As a buyer, you have given the taxes to me. I must have deposited either through e-cash ledger or through e-credit ledger. In the transaction which we are discussing, I have deposited the tax. And last, you as a buyer registered recipient filing your GST return. Tell me out of these four conditions which I stated, where it is written that credit must be reflected in 2A or 2B. And just to highlight, and this is the important one, this is a legal interpretation. In this union budget 2021, Finance Bill 2021. Fifth condition got introduced as subclause double A under section 16, subsection 2. And this clause is prospective clause. It is not retrospective clause. And it is yet to be notified. So two things, prospective clause and yet to be notified. What is this clause? Listen very carefully. And that is the answer of my judgment. Invoice or debit note on which you are availing credit as a buyer that must be furnished by the supplier in a GSTR 1. And it must be communicated from supplier to the recipient. This is the fifth condition introduced very first time in the, in the Finance Bill 2021 Clause number 100. Now, this fifth condition is yet to be notified. It is not notified as yet. Whenever it is going to be notified, it is going to be prospectively applicable. So, meaning thereby, just start and give me your answer, legal interpretation. Now, this fifth condition is saying, invoice and debit note on which you are availing credit, that must be furnished by supplier in a GSTR-1. So as it is coming in your 2A or 2B. And it must be communicated by supplier to the recipient. My legal interpretation is. This is the first time GST law has introduced the condition of sensitivity of 2A or 2B, which is yet to be notified. So I can very well say, till the time this clause gets notified, 2A, 2B, is not dependent for availing credit by the buyers. This 2A and 2B got introduced by way of rule, GST rule, rule 60. There was no provision in the act. Very first time it is the part of act yet to be notified, being qualified, chartered accountant, legal interpretation. You tell me, unless there is a provision in the act, can you Put a condition on me that 2A and 2B is the important document for availing credit. My reading goes, no way, no way. Unless this clause gets implemented, 
My credit is not dependent on 2A or 2B. I'm looking for the answer from each one of you. The first interpretation, I do not want to do anything. And second, unless this clause implemented only four condition, you should have tax invoice, you must have received goods and services, your supplier must have paid taxes, and you are, as buyer, you are regularly filing your GSTR return where the condition of 2A or 2B. And please tell me if supplier furnishes wrong GST number and he could not amend. B2B supply is shown as a B2C. You are not doing any mistake. And it is interstate supply shown as an intrastate or place of supply wrongly furnished as against Maharashtra. It is shown as a daily. Where is your fault? So way forward. 2A, 2B is dependent only from a prospective date which is yet to be notified. Then silver lining would be my credit is not dependent upon 2A or 2B. Am I clear to all? Please tell me in a chat box, at least you agree with my interpretation that 2A, 2B is not determining. Please tell me yes or no in a chat box so that I get a clarity that you got my point. Can I see your answer in a chat box? If quickly you can write down. Okay, all right. Oh, all right. So a lot of you started writing the answer. There was one participant. I did not see his name properly, but he said, Bimalji, there is one uh, provision, Rule 36, sub Rule 4. I do not know how many of you would be knowing about this rule. Rule 36, sub Rule 4 of CGST rule. It got introduced from 9th of October 2019. Listen very carefully. Today, I really want you should be mesmerized in terms of understanding of GST law. This rule got introduced from 9th of October 2019. And what was this rule? This rule was creating a capping, capping on ITC, input tax credit pertaining to such invoice and debit note, which is not coming in your GSTR 2A. So if it is not coming in GSTR 2A, simple meaning it is not furnished by supplier in a GSTR 1. So let's take an example so that you can understand. And I would be looking for the answer also. I know that integrity of these provision, you might not be there, but it is good for understanding sake. Let's say, you got book credit of 15 lakh rupees, one five lakh, 15 lakh rupees. Your GSTR 2A is showing 10 lakh rupees. So there is difference of five lakh rupees. Five lakh rupees credit is not coming in your GSTR 2A. Now question will come, this five lakh rupees credit not coming in GSTR 2A, but as per books, because you're satisfying all four conditions. You are having tax invoice. Uh, you have received goods and services. Your supplier has paid the taxes. He has filed GSTR 3B, but he has not filed GSTR 1. If he has not filed GSTR 1, that's the reason it is not coming in 2A. I'm giving region, possible region. And possible region could be mistake by supplier. B2B shown as a B2C, wrongly furnished up GST number, wrongly furnished a place of supply. There may be any number of region why it is not coming in GSTR 2A. But as per the four condition, you are eligible to avail credit. That's the reason 15 lakh rupees credit in your books of accounts. As against 10 lakh rupees coming in your GSTR 2A. Now question is, can I avail credit of 15 lakh rupees total? Or there would be capping. This rule 36 sub rule 4 creating a capping and capping was initially 20% of eligible credit coming in your GSTR 2A pertaining to 5 lakh rupees. Pertaining to 5 lakh rupees. This 20% reduced to 10% from 1st January 2020, reduced to 5% from 1st January 2021. So, as on date, provision is only 5%. 
So you are entitled to the extent of 5% of eligible credit coming in GSTR 2A pertaining to 5 lakh rupees. So simply if I ask mathematical equation before I conclude legal interpretation, tell me 15 lakh rupees credit in books, 10 lakh rupees credit in GSTR 2A, 5 lakh credit difference for availing credit of 5 lakh if you read rule 36 sub rule 4, how much credit would be available? Tell me in a chat box quickly. I want to see the answer so that I get a feeling that my audience is well prepared today and they can answer. It's a mathematics. Tell me 5% of what? Pertaining to 5 lakh rupees. How much? I haven't received any answer in a chat box. None has given me any answer. So Rajkumar Agarwal, the first one, CA. MSH Majani, second one, 50,000 rupees. 5% of 10 lakh, which is coming in my GSTR 2A, 10 lakh, 50,000 at most would be available. That's for rule 36 of rule 4. Now, my answer to all of you Was there any provision that my credit is dependent on GSTR 2A or 2B? There was no provision. This provision got introduced by Clause 100 of Finance Bill 2021, which I said just a while ago. And I said this clause is prospective clause, yet to be notified. Then what is the legal interpretation? My credit is not dependent on 2A or 2B. If I'm satisfying four conditions, Credit would be available irrespective of fact. It is coming my 2A or 2B. And that's what I'm saying. Rule 36 of Rule 4 is ultra vires, beyond the provision of law. These rules are got introduced with no backing from the law, no backing from the provision of the act. And I'm not the only person saying so. Please. 15 lakh rupees credit would be available. A lot of writ has been filed in different high court. And for your information, these are admitted in the high court and notice has been issued to the revenue. We are talking very first time. You may have seen me in the past also. Take my word for granted. Take my word for granted. My credit is not dependent on GSTR 2A or 2B. It is going to be implemented from a date to be notified and it is prospective clause. So prior period, prior to the date of notification, 2A, 2B will not be determining factor. Only from the date of notification, it is going to be determining factor. So today, if I'm satisfying four condition under section 16, subsection two, I'm entitled to avail 100% credit, 15 lakh rupees credit. No rule 36 sub rule 4. That is my conclusion and humble submission. This was my first case study on burning issue where the credit is dependent on 2A or 2B. I will look forward from the participants to say in a chat box, yes, they got my point and they have understood my point for their understanding sake. If it is clear, say yes. If it is not clear, you can always say no. We are in democratic countries, so we can share each other's views. Okay, so thank you very much. A uh, lot of you know participants started writing in a chat box. That makes my task very easy. And it helped me that yes, my point has gone to your way. Thank you very much. Picking up the second important one. So Unnati Sai is saying, Deepak, as on date, there is no straightforward judgment but definitely you take my word for granted. I'm telling you, invite me next time. After six months, I'm sure even uh, one of the writ is being filed by me as well. And I'm sure we will get the judgment which I said today. See, you cannot make provision by way of rule unless supported by the act. Subtle jurisprudence. Rule are subordinate to the provision of the act. You have introduced the rule, but there is no provision. How it is going to be sustained? And I given the region 
that there are lot many mistake by supplier he could not amend your credit would be denied it is your vested right it can't be denied and that's what my summation all about coming to the second burning issue of india in gst regime <laughs> uh, so jagbandu kar is saying dggi would not agree don't worry about that and that is the reason we are here to argue and debate and that's what this forum is all about second point i'm a supplier from delhi you all are from maharashtra i supplied the goods worth rupees 10 lakh applied 18% gst rate it is igst transaction charged you have paid the amount to me to the supplier supplier did not deposit i faulted i did not deposit the money tell me as a buyer whether you will get the credit or not as per section 16 subsection 2 clause c which i said but you please tell me you gave the amount to me being buyer you paid the amount to the supplier supplier is a defaulter he did not deposit when a credit would be available to you say yes or no in a chat box please write whatever coming to your mind don't assume that uh, you are giving any exam but this kind of webinar will help you to understand the topic so please tell me credit is available or not so unnati is saying no so i'm getting mixed answer yes and no so k satnaran raju saying no that all four conditions are not satisfied pavan singhal is saying credit is available so lot of different divergent answer coming now i'm giving answer to all of you and when i conclude the matter you let me know whether you got it right or not See where is your fault? Where the buyer's fault? He has honestly paid the amount to the supplier. Who defaulted? Suppliers defaulted. Why credit will not be available? Section sixteen, subsection two, clause C saying, unless supplier pays the tax amount, credit is not available. That's the reason you are saying credit is not available. My answer to all of you. First. the similar issue was there in pre gst under central excise where credit was available as a sandwich credit the matter has gone up to the supreme court in the case of kk industries an issue was with a sandwich credit can be denied for the fault of supplier of non payment of taxes central excise this was the same issue honorable supreme court has held credit can't be denied come to the vat regime delhi high court under delhi vat regime same issue where the credit can be denied for the buyer for the non payment by the supplier fault of supplier of non payment of taxes honorable delhi high court has said credit can't be denied matter has been has gone to supreme court slp was filed against delhi high court judgment by the department before the supreme court SLP got dismissed. Nothing was discussed on merit, but SLP got dismissed. But to tell you, there are number of judgment from different high court in favor of a taxpayer. Credit can't be denied for the buyer for non-payment of taxes by the supplier, except Bombay High Court judgment, Mahakot and Lakshmi case. So they are all judgment in favor of a taxpayer, except one judgment. which is coming from um, bombay high court pay forward in gst similar issue similar issue i am your supplier you are my buyer you paid the amount to me i defaulted supplier defaulted where the credit can be denied for my buyer what is happening today in the market department coming at the recipient end at the buyer end either they are coming through nti agent department or they are coming through dggi and telling the recipient and buyer you will not get credit why you will not get credit your supplier has not paid the taxes that is the reason they are giving 
and uh, one of the case has gone to madras high court in the case of dy bethel enterprises in the case of dy bethel enterprises this matter has gone before madras high court in that case what happened department has passed order against the buyer for reversal of credit along with interest and penalty for what non payment of taxes by the supplier buyer has given the amount to the supplier supplier defaulted it is again demanded from the recipient you reverse it is as good as double payment double payment you as a buyer has paid the amount to me to the supplier supplier defaulted and again it is being demanded reversal from your side double taxation but listen the argument there were certain argument which was presented before honorable madras high court and this judgment in our favor and very good judgment very good judgment listen those argument argument number 1 petitioner has said to the high court my lord gst got introduced it was banking upon itc matching and mismatching an automated gst return system automated what is this automated gst return system being supplier i will file my gst r1 it is going to be reflected in gst r2 a of the recipient am i right so you can always check and verify and then you are going to file gst r2 if any mistake let's say i have not uploaded the invoice or i have made some mistake wrong gst number or wrong way of furnished particulars wrongly furnished you as a recipient can finalize your gst r2 avail the credit do the correction whatever you want once you file your gst r2 it is getting auto populated for supplier in gst r1 a as if some correction done by the recipient which i need to check and verify either i need to accept or reject while filing my gst r3 it was automated gst return system coming out from section 37 38 39 41 42 it is all in conjunction with each other all are interlinked it cannot be read in isolation what is the argument given by the petitioner listen very carefully and these argument when you will listen you will love that why these argument are getting a favorable judgment from the high courts petitioner said my lord please tell me until this gstr 2a came into the picture and when this gstr 2a came into the picture sometime beginning of 2019 prior to that gstr 2a was not there and government has not introduced gstr 2 and 3 since beginning july 1 2017 we are only filing gstr1 and 3b gstr 2a which was supposed to come did not come on time came some time in the beginning of 2019 now this petitioner is saying to my lord please tell me how do i come to know the taxes which i paid to the supplier bimal jain he has not deposited where from i will come to know unless this gstr 2a will come into the picture so period prior to gstr 2a i was having no information that even after collecting the tax by bimal jain supplier he has not deposited so please tell me where i am accountable responsible buyer is responsible and buyer has quoted one doctrine of impossibility settle supreme court legal jurisprudence doctrine of impossibility what is this doctrine of impossibility lax non cogit ad impossibilia you cannot compel a person to do something which is impossible as a buyer are you not put into a condition that you should know whether your buyer has your supplier has deposited or not you are not having no information to a was not available where from you will come to know buyer will come to know the supplier has not deposited the tax and can you put onus and responsibility on buyer when 2a is not available this was argument number 1 argument number 2 my lord 
this GST department has given registration to both supplier and recipient. You are coming and checking and doing everything at the recipient end. You have given registration to supplier as well. And you know this supplier defaulted. Why are you not taking any action against the defaulting supplier? Who has stopped you? You have given registration to Bimal Jain. Bimal Jain has not paid the taxes. You know where Bimal Jain is. Why are you not catch holding his neck? Second point. Third point which was argued, my lord, principle of natural justice. The person who defaulted must be catch hold first. You cannot come to the recipient and start to compensate, asking to compensate for such loss of taxes, which is done by Bimal Jain, supplier. Honorable Madras High Court has held, unless investigation and inquiry is being initiated against the defaulting supplier, you cannot you cannot, I'm using the word cannot, demand any reversal of credit from the buyer, recipient. And there's no question of interest and penalty. Leave it aside. And that's the judgment, beauty of this judgment. So my conclusion to all of you would be, period prior to GSTR 2A, we are having strong reason to argue. Period of 17, 18, 1819, until the time GSTR 2A started showing the particulars whether the supplier has paid the taxes or not. Till that time, we are having strong reason to argue that credit can't be denied. But period post GSTR 2A, as a buyer, if you know that Bimal Jain defaulted and he's defaulting, he's not making payment of tax and still you continue to buy from me, then you have little poor case to defend yourself. So you can bifurcate your period. Period prior to GSTR 2A, I can tell you and bet none can stop you. But period after GSTR 2A, there may be other argument. But on the basis of 2A, you are having little weak case in your favor. That would be my conclusion. Tell me in a chat box. That you all agree with me. If you all agree with me, say yes in a chat box. That would be my submission to all of you. Say yes in a chat box. That will help my position that you all got my point. Thank you very much. So see, I am being able to convert a lot of you in my favor with the argument which I'm putting forth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So great to all of you. So Pavan Singhalji, thank you very much. See, Arpit, uh, now GSTR 2A is showing taxes paid by the supplier or not. This, furnish, this uh, information is coming, whether your supplier is filing GSTR 3B or not. You can only debate, Arpit, to the extent of his total outward supply. And within his total outward supply, my invoice, invoice of buyer is included or not. These are the subjective point. And I say even post GSTR 2A, we have got lot many other region to fight and defend our case. But for a clarity, I say it, period prior to GSTR 2A, strong region. Period post GSTR 2A, little poor, but other point to defend. So still I can argue, even post GSTR 2A, if supplier defaulted, it must be first demanded from the supplier. It should not be from the recipient. Let me take up now one fake invoice issue. Fake invoice and fake credit. And that would be, might be the last technical session because one hour session we have planned today. So last session. Alpit, I'm not saying very difficult. I'm saying that there may be challenges. Please, uh, we can carry on you know, asking and debating ourselves. And that is what the fake invoice issue I'm doing for you, Arpit, and for all the participants here. And, and you will love now my defense, my argument will come, which you will find important one. Listen carefully. What is fake invoice? I got a call from one of the client. And client was telling me, sir, I got one small query in GST. 
Now, in you have seen uh, through the market, there is no big query, all small queries, and that too over phone. Person calling up from uh, Amritsar region to Delhi and asking me, Bimalji, small query. Normally, you know, picking up call and answering on call, quite difficult task, but nevertheless, that day I picked up the call and he's asking me, sir, I'm a buyer. I got tax invoice, eBay bill was generated, substantiating receipt of goods, payment was made through banking route. So I'm filing my regular GST return and my supplier has also paid the taxes through 3B. That is what I've seen in my GST at 2 way Whether credit is available or not available. I get the answer that credit is available. No problem. Credit is available. Then he sounded Bimalji. Aap samaj nahi rahe hai. That's the way he told me Bimalji. Aap samaj nahi rahe hai. So I said whatever you said over phone credit is available but if i'm not understanding then come to the office for better understanding so he has come next day to my office sitting in front of me and again the same question question watch sir i'm having tax invoice copy i received goods and services because ebay bill was generated payment was made through banking route through bank channel payment was made and I'm regularly filing my GST return. Credit is available or not available? I responded credit is available. But then I sounded to the client, Mr. So-and-so, you have come from all the way from Amritsar. This question you posted to me over phone as well. Now you're asking same question. There's something else in your mind which you're not saying to me. Tell me openly what is the issue. He sounded, said day before yesterday, they watch search at my premises authority has come and they have said you have availed the wrong credit and but which is called fake credit on the basis of fake invoice raised hence this credit is not available and credit amount involves nine crore rupees nine crore rupees so it is more than five crore you are liable and we can arrest you also so you must deposit this money, otherwise we are going to arrest you. This is what uh, the uh, actual happening day before yesterday at his premises. He's just sitting in front of me and looking for the answer. He posted first query to me, Mr. Jain, I really want to have clarity from you. Before he wanted clarity, I countered him and tell him, first you tell me honestly, how much is the fake credit you have availed? He then responded, said three crore rupees, three crore rupees, fake credit out of nine crore rupees. And how come it is fake credit? Listen the transaction. My client is C, he purchased from B and B has purchased from A. So A was only raising the invoice, cutting the invoice, filing GSTR1, but no 3B, no payment. So once A, raising invoice, furnishing in GSTR 1, coming in GSTR 2A of the B, but no payment of tax by A. Now B was using the same credit for his outward supply payment. So B was filing GSTR 1, so it's coming in 2A of C and making payment of tax using the same credit which he has purchased from A. So ultimately, the C got the credit of what, of which no taxes are being deposited. Because it was a transaction initiated from A. I'm asking all of you, before I give my answer to all of you, whether C is entitled to avail credit, tell me yes or no, of which no taxes originally being deposited. A is at fault. Tell me whether credit would be available to the C, yes or no. Tell me whatever coming to your mind, but you should be free to answer me. C is entitled. Paban is saying uh, not available. Ajit is saying uh, no. So a lot of you, Dr. Indonil Mukhopadhyay is saying yes. So there is a Mr. Jagbandukar. He's saying primarily yes. So I do not know what is secondarily. 
is saying primarily yes. So Rohit is saying yes, he is not aware of. Now listen very carefully. Logically, credit of taxes which is not being deposited can always be litigated. How come credit is available? But I'm giving you one of the argument. Listen this argument very carefully. Argument H. How come C would be knowing? Please listen. This is a very beautiful argument which you may take the advantage. How come C would be knowing the credit flowing to B is not being deposited? I can at most check my immediate supplier, B. I can only check filing of GSTR 1 and 3B of B, but I cannot go beyond B. And I am I'm having no information through GSTN portal. C is having no information from GSTN portal so that he can cross-check preceding to the B. So I can always say before the court, doctrine of impossibility, lax non causit ad impossibilia, my lord. I can only check B. And when I check B, I found that he has filed GSTR 1, so as it is coming in my GSTR 2A. I have checked he is filing GSTR 3B. I do not know where from he has purchased. And so you got my point. I can always say, my Lord C is not in a position unless having the information. So doctrine of impossibility applicable. I am sure you will agree with me. C cannot go beyond B. Argument number one. Argument number two. Now what department is doing? What department is doing? They are demanding reversal from C. They are demanding from B also. They are demanding from A also. I'm asking whether the same transaction can be triply tax, triple time. 100 rupees transaction. You're demanding from A also. You're demanding from B also. You're demanding from C also. Where from? There's one term which is going in a market, circular trading. What is circular trading, you know? A is raising invoice for 100 and charging GST to B. B is raising invoice for 110, charging to C. Let's say circular trading. Assume circular trading. And where department reach, there's no receipt of goods or services. Assumed. Now, if at all any investigation going on at the end of B, who is adding value addition of 10%? Can you demand full tax from A also, from B also, from C also? Can't be possible. GST is a value addition tax. Value addition tax. It is going to be levied on value addition on supply chain. You cannot demand whole tax and whole tax from three parties. Can't be possible. I given three parties. There may be six parties. There is nothing in clear term. And when investigations start against B, department will not say that they have done anything from against A or against C and got collected something. If they have collected something, that must be net off. For demanding from B, nothing is coming out. As per my understanding, GST law has stated it is only on value addition. Of course, circular trading can be debated. Credit not available on receipt of goods or services. But it can't be stated. It can't be stated. I'm using the term. Can't be stated that tax can be collected from three parties. Third argument, which I gave. If I'm going and defending the case before the authority, I will say to the authority, my lord, sir, Whatever B has paid or A has paid, you must give me a net off and then demand from me reversal. You cannot demand the same tax from all three parties. And in this point, this is very important how to defend. Next part, you can always say installment payment. Wherever you feel like you are struggling with the working capital, GST can be paid on installment also, other than self-assessment tax, under Section 80 of CGST Act. So if you're struggling with working capital, you can very well go and debate. 
I want to pay under installment. And commissioner is having right to allow you for 24 month EMI under section 80 of CGST Act. So fake invoice has got lot many parameter, lot many issues therein. I just given the flavor today that what kind of favor which is emerging. Now in this given transaction, we have to summarize somewhere. Can see be at least that it is fake credit because he does not know what is happening beyond B. In my humble summation, I can at most check B only. I cannot go beyond I cannot go beyond B. Hence, credit in the hands of C cannot be disputed. That would be unless they're the cannibals. Unless department prove A, B, and C are Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai. Unless department prove. Otherwise, beach credit cannot be disputed. That would be my humble submission. Tell me in my chat box, you agree. Say yes in a chat box that you agreed with me. I want to see that yes in a chat box. If you can just say yes in a chat box, that will help me that yes, this matter is also to your satisfaction. So a lot of you know judges are giving judgment in my favor. So I'm fortunate enough. I'm being passed on my you know pointers to all of you. Very well. The last point, because time is permitting me five minutes more, then uh, let me take another issue and then I will sum up today's presentation. Last one. You are a company. You want to get constructed mall, hotel, your office, or your factory. You're a company. You engage Bimal Jain as a works contractor for construction of mall, hotel, factory, or office. My first question to all of you, I'm going to charge GST on construction of immovable property, am I right? Please tell me whether credit is available to you. Say yes or no. I know section 17, subsection 5, clause C, credit is not available. Rajkumar Agarwal ji, please, Credit is not available. There's a negative list. Credit is not available. Even though you are going to use hotel, mall for taxable outward supplies. See, once construction done, the purpose of getting hotel constructed, mall constructed, is for commercial letting out. Chargeable to GST, but credit is not available. There's a bar. Under section 17, subsection 5, clause C and clause D, credit not available. Fortunately, this matter has gone to Odisha High Court in Safari Retreats. Safari Retreats. An honorable Odisha High Court has given judgment in favor of a taxpayer. In favor of a taxpayer. That credit should be available, keeping in mind seamless flow of credit, object clause, and on the concept that this hotel and mall getting constructed going to be huge for taxable outward supplies. SLP got filed against this Odisha High Court judgment in Supreme Court. Matter is subjudice before Honorable Supreme Court. We all are in dilemma what to be done. And this is the final, you know, very important point. So you may be having a position that certain credit which is subjective credit. You do not know whether credit available or not available. So what you should do, and that is what I'm going to share with all of you. Let's say if it is pertaining to construction, you know it is subjective item, subjudice, you're not aware whether this credit would be decided in favor or against. My answer to all of you would be, take this credit, avail this credit. Caution, don't utilize the same. Take the credit, but don't utilize the same. I given, I told you, take the credit, don't utilize the same. Why I say it? For two reasons. First reason, if you avail the credit and Supreme Court says credit is available, assume hypothetically, and if you have availed the credit, then you satisfy the time limit condition of section 16, subsection 4. If you have not availed the credit, and Supreme Court decide credit available, then you will not be able to get the credit because time limit gone. So strategy should be take the credit, 
but don't utilize the same. Don't utilize the same. Second, if Supreme Court decide negative, credit is not available, which you have availed, that would be termed as wrongly availed. I will tell you reverse the same. When you're reversing next question, your next question you're going to ask Bimal Jain, sir, wrong credit avail there would be implication of interest and penalty. Am I right? That would be your next question. My answer to all of you. No interest, no penalty. On reversal of wrongly availed credit for the region, section 50, which talks about interest, interest. Interest is liable when there is non-payment of tax or short payment of tax. But credit availed, never utilized. So because of this wrongly availed credit, there is neither a short payment nor a non-payment. Why interest is going to be liable? And judgment in our favor, commercial steel injuring company, Patna High Court. F1 component private limited credit is available and the reversal of wrongly availed credit, no interest. So to my mind, wrongly availed credit, if reversed, but that is not utilized, no interest, no penalty. So I'm giving you the judgment of Patna High Court and Madras High Court. Commercial Steel Injuring Company and F1 Component Private Limited. So I've given you the strategy wherever you're struggling, whether credit is available or not, you first avail the credit so that you satisfy condition of time limit section 16, subsection 4. Once you confirm that this credit is not available, then reverse the same because you have not utilized, hence no implication of interest and penalty. So this is what uh, total uh, I thought of, you know, picking up lot many other burning issues, but time is always paused. One hour we have thought of today. That was the plan for today's webinar. But in case you want to get lot many update on GST and you want to be connected with the Bimal Jain, you can uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you can go to our website and subscribe your email ID free of cost, no charges for getting GST knowledge and GST update we are sending on daily basis. We are charging no money and we are actually trying Sapka Saath, Sapka Vikas and trying our best to make GST good and simple tax. Thank you very much.